Hello everyone and welcome to Fable Hame and Age of Wonders 4. It has been 9 years since Age of Wonders 3, but we're back in the Fantasy 4X game. If you enjoyed the Spellforce Conquest of AO series, then you are in for a treat, because this is the series it was basically based off of. And of course, what better way to break in a Fantasy 4X than with Eratus, the Lord of the Dead. There is a story to the game. I have no idea what it is, though. The Wizard Kings are back, or something. Because in my humble opinion, the best way to enjoy Age of Wonders is by creating your own scenario. And so we're going to create our own realm. Now, unfortunately, our own realm is going to be very boring. You know, first realm and all that. It's just going to be this. Just continents. Why? Because a lot of these modifiers are pretty heavy-handed. So if you set a climate... Well, there's going to be a lot of that climate and not much else. Set an inhabitant, a lot of that inhabitant, and not much else. So I'm just going to let the AI completely YOLO whatever it wants. And yeah. Map distance is determined differently in this game than previous Age of Wonders. It's based on how far you are between the players and how many players there are. So we're going to do far for a huge map. Nine players. We're going to beat so many people. And of course, we're going to do it on brutal difficulty. Because Irantis can... We're going to be using classical turns. Simultaneous is more for AoE. As for our realm, this is Eratus's staging ground. The Lord of the Dead has returned. You can change the visuals if you like, but because it's just the basic one, we're going to leave it the basic realm. Seems fine. There are advanced settings, but um, I'm not going to go too through much of them. Here are all of our random rulers. Unlike in previous Age of Wonders, you cannot make enemies for you to fight. It has to come from your pantheon, which are people who have won games before, so Eratus will return in the future. You can have it randomized to a pre-built god here, which is what we'll just do for our first one, or you can take this, which means it will just be YOLO made with a whole bunch of random options. Probably more fun for long-term replayability and all that. I hear a bunch of game flow changes. These are... We're just going to leave them as they are. Um, sure... Expansion and magic victory conditions could be dangerous with all the cheating that AI gets, but whatever. Hero Resurgence is only going to be on for auto combat. Which means if the AI kills my hero in auto combat, it comes back. And that's all fine. Great. Fantastic. Let's get into the fun part, shall we? Here are all the pre-created characters. Some of these names may look familiar if you actually did play the Age of Wonders campaign. <laughs> Unlike me. Now, here's where we get into it. This is basically just an aesthetic. There are body and mind traits, but you can choose any of them for any of the forms. And it says people's form. That's important. Now, of course, if Eratus is coming into a new world, what would he take over? And the answer is the only race he had a hand in creating in Eratus' lore, and that is the Shadow Elves. Cleverly named. So we'll be making the Elfkin. They start with Keen Sighted, so they're more accurate on physical ranged and magical attacks, and Arcane Focus. We're getting rid of both of these. For body, I wanted to go Resistant, because they are a resistant to magic. That's magic specifically. Now for the Mind Trait, there are quite a few good ones, and Arcane Focus is also good and also applicable to the Shadow Elves, who deal pretty much strictly magic damage. But I'm going to go with Underground Adaptation because they were exiled into the underground. So it makes sense. This is a very cliche Dark Elf build. Don't be too surprised here. And also, Underground Adaptation is amazing for, you know, being in the underground. These are the cultures. These are essentially your race. And uh, there's actually quite a lot of variety, but we're going to be playing, of course, as Dark. The Dark is to Shadow Affinity, which will become very important. Don't you worry about it. The specialties of the Dark culture is that cities can negate city stability income penalties, which is basically like happiness. There are unique city structures granting additional knowledge and extra income from prisons and crypts, which hopefully will be full to the brim of our enemies. And units specialize in inflicting negative status effects and exploiting them with Call the Weak. So we like making people weaker with debuffs and then smacking them. Also, you begin with negative 10 alignment. You don't have to be evil as a dark culture. But their society? when we go into the society traits here, you are incentivized with a few of them. 
Now, the ones I'm going to go with, there are a lot of them here. There are three per alignment, or excuse me, per affinity, and you can unlock more through the Pantheon. Of course, I'm level zero. And one of the evil ones is the Scions of Evil. And what this does is that per rank of evil, you gain Draft, which helps you recruit units, and you gain Imperium, which is important. And I think I'm going to go with that one. <sighs> Scions of Evil. Because the Shadow Elves are evil. And for our other trait, we're going to be going up here into the Astral Affinity, and we're going to be getting Mana Channelers, which reduces the cost of summoning spells, which may or may not be important later, I don't actually know. But the important thing is the Magic Origin, because the Undead count as Magical Origins. So, that is the plan. It's a great plan. Uh, there are a whole bunch of choices, and they really do change things up, but uh, plenty of you do have made videos about going over all of them. Magic. Now, here are the tomes. The tomes are another way to gain affinity, and pretty much your research tree, both for unlocking new units related to the affinity and unlocking magic. Magic for both the world map and for combat. Each affinity is split into basically two types. Shadow is split into Cryomancy and Undead, which is what we will be taking. This is how you unlock the Undead mechanic. You can do this on any race, any culture, any character, even a good boy. You just have to have a Tomb of Souls. This is what gives us the Soul Harvest so we can collect souls and use them. And Soul Collector, the Bone Daddy, is already back. What is your ruler's origin? And now we get to make Iratus himself. Now, there are two types of or uh, rulers. There are the champions, who have arisen from their own people. This increases city stability and gold income. All non-hero units gain 20% experience, and you have better relationship with the free cities. However, we are from another world. Iratus has broken the barriers and crossed the astral sea to seek new life to undo. And so he is a wizard king, which gives all cities mana income, you get additional world map casting points and combat casting points, and you can over channel so you can cast two spells in one turn, which is kind of like cheating. Eratus' favorite thing. Reveal yourself. Now, fun little tidbit, if you are a champion, you have to be the same faction as your character, so we would have to be an elf. But if you are a wizard king, you can be anything that your heart desires. No, you know, it's, it's playable. And so I am going to create Eratus, and he's going to be beautiful. And here is Eratus, the Lord of the Dead. Isn't he beautiful? I said he would be. This, I think, was about as close as I could get. And uh, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Pretty satisfied with it. You can choose your starting weapon. Of course, you can find more weapons. But uh, Lightning Orb, I think, is the most appropriate. This is kind of like the damaging one. The Spirit Staff has supports, which, like... You could argue that he could heal his undead. But Eratus was more of a murdering, buffing type character than anything else. Of course, we have his lovely crown. Dyed red in the color of his enemies. We could just make it black, but... Eh, uh, that'll do. Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. And his eyes are red. Glowing red. Could do purple. It's close enough. Nah, nah, nah. Go red. You can also change how your race looks. There are... Much fewer options. But this is basically our race. As far as the mounts concerned, I wanted Spoders. But the only other animal mentioned in Eratus, of course, for the best boy werewolf, is the wolf. So I'll go with that. They're great. Alright. And this is one of my favorite parts. We get to customize a whole bunch of things. You can choose a few of the pre-made names or titles, but of course we are the supreme necromancer. Now, unfortunately, if we just did first name Eratus and then took this off, um, it would generate one for us. So we're going to have to be creative. Our last name will be Eratus, and our first name will be Death Lord, because Lord of the Dead is one thing off. Isn't that a tilter? So Death Lord. Borrowing from the Death Knight. <laughs> the wild death knight thing. And our race, as you would imagine, the Shadow Elves. We took them over. 
Hail, Supreme Necromancer Deathlord Eratus, Wizard King from the Beyond, his arcane powers will shape the future of the Shadow Elves. And the rest of the world, really. Here we go. Let us see how the AI generates all this. We are traveling to our realm. And here we are in the deep, dark. The underdark, you could even call it. But um boom. The Scions of Evil. We begin with Soulfire, which is a combat spell, and Ice Shack. Two combat spells, not bad. Okay. The starting town is called Aimavech. No, it's not. It is called, of course. How do I change this? There it is. The crypts. That is where Aratus begins. Now, the Whispering Stone can be used for two purposes. One, it can be given to a city to improve its ability, or it can be given to a free city to improve your relationship. Since we haven't found one yet, we'll just toss it in here. Our governor is already assigned, so I'm not sure why that button is clickable, but that is all right. You can also auto the expansion and kind of like tell it, hey, do this for me, but we'll be doing this probably for most of the campaign. Manually, of course. Down here, we have a lot of stuff going on. Allow me to go over it briefly. We have food income. This increases our growth, which means we can take more of our provinces. Production is how quickly we build structures. If we are not building any structures, we can merchandise, which will convert a portion of our production into gold. We have draft, which allows us to recruit units. So you can recruit units and buildings, build buildings at the same time, unlike in Age of Wonders 3. And if we are not recruiting a unit, some of that draft is converted into food. So they're still useful even if you aren't building anything at the moment. Of course, gold income. This is to build buildings and recruit units from town. Mana income to cast spells in combat and in the world and for upkeep of magical units, such as the undead. Knowledge is for researching through a tree and Imperium is used for a lot of empire-related things, such as attracting population, which instantly grows your city. Now, unlike Age of Wonders 3, where you popped, like you had a ring around you that would expand and absorb nodes, this is a lot more like Planetfall, where you get to pick, we actually have a pretty juicy star here, you pick individual little provinces and uh, expand on top of them. It's actually really, really cool looking. So, let's get started, shall we? We have 15 souls in the pocket. Um, we should probably start building something. It's always a good idea to build production-related things and food-related things. Some of these are unique because of our faction. I think the workshop is dark. Maybe it's this one. It might be that one. Anyway. Get that. We have our skeleton uh, tried and true. We can also hurry recruitment for 70 gold. Hurry production. That sort of thing. Before we get too crazy here, Apologies for the cuts. I decided to wait out some yard work to spare both your ears and mine. But before we get too crazy, just wanted to say that the plan is for these videos to be about an hour, give or take, just like in the Spellforce series, and for them to appear at least every other day, but possibly more frequently for the Tippet, because I'm very excited about the series, uh, in case you can tell. But this first one, this first one's going to be a long one. You're you can probably tell already. Wow, how do I turn you off? I found it. Turn her off. I mean, nice voice acting, but let's be honest. I don't need it. I know what I'm doing. Kind of. Sort of. Now, auto combat in this game is pretty good, but we are going to manual just to show things off, just to see what's crack-a-lacking. And of course, witness Eratus is wonderful. He is on a wolf as well. Hmm. The re one of the reasons I wanted to go with staff is because staves cannot get on mounts. That's okay. Look at our beautiful lord, our beautiful death lord. Now, our starting tier 1 warrior is the Dark Warrior, and he is actually a shock unit, which means he only attacks once, but his attack is improved by moving, is it three tiles or more? Yes, up to three hexes. And it also will cancel defense mode, so we are a lot about bum rushing in. We can also face directions, which is amazing. Our little skeleton our spear boys with 69 hit points nice now the beautiful thing about spears is they stab things real good real good i might even stand here because this will block off this entrance entirely that's the play 
We have our Outrider. The Outrider is the scout unit. Scouts are not particularly great in combat, but they're here just for moral support. These are our pursuers, and they will be very useful in combat. Ideally. They do there for now. And last but not least, our second Dark Warrior. Looking for that angle. That flat angle. Yes, we will end the turn and go into defense mode. We don't have a whole lot of support as the Dark Culture, which is part of what makes it kind of hard to play. But uh, we have the built-in regeneration that we're going to try and manage. Now we're going to be going in, because that is what Eratus does best. I need souls to cast all. That makes sense, actually. So let's start cast some Ice Shackles. This will do Ice Damage and... I have to get used to right-clicking. Ice Damage and slow the target. My brain just had to think about it for a second. Now we can run in with these guys. Boom. That will cancel their retaliation and their defense mode, so they will not take more damage. We're running with those guys as well, and we will... Let's see. We can shoot from here. Relative, with relative safety. And we can even cast this. This is a free action. I believe. Yes. To cast Ice Shackles once again. Hmm. Okay. We'll do it that way. Now we can get our Spear Boys. We're probably going to get the Skeleton. Let's see. Hold on. Can I kill you with a Scout? Because you don't have a whole lot of health left. Maybe. Don't hit my warriors. Nice. Accuracy is back, but only for ranged attacks. So melee attacks do not have a hit chance. They will always connect. Unless there's some sort of weird status effect. We might win some more pursuers, because they have a chance to weaken. Yeah, there we go. And remember, we deal bonus damage to people who are weakened things to kill the weak. Now we're going to get our skelly boys in here, just to hold the line, and they are just going to defend. Nothing spicy. As for Eratus... Our supreme necromancer just zap. Alright, good turn. Good turn. Another change from previous Age of Wonders games is that there is only one retaliation. That. It used to be based off of your action points, so you could actually drain an entire person's turn just by forcing them to retaliate against you. It was a pretty powerful strategy. That is no longer the case. Although Spear Boys can get more in a variety of ways. Looks like our speaking of spear boys. We're gonna take down the little piglets. Which fun fact, piglets are a planetfall model. Okay, we get two shots. 90% chance to weaken. Let's go. Boom boom. We got the weaken, which means we get the smack. And we can even. I still haven't forgotten the charge bug. So in Spellforce Conquest of Ao, if you were charging with a unit and you picked the tile that you wanted to charge to and then attacked, it could softlock the game. But not an Age of Wonders for... Ah, beautiful. Which is good because I think the Dark Culture has a lot of charge units. We got five souls out of that. Not too bad. Like I said, we'll be doing a lot of auto combat here from here forward, henceforth. But I just wanted to... Show things off. Our skeleton can join the battle. I guess I got production or draft from that. Okay. Now let's make him the pursuer. That was a good idea that I had. Now we are in the underground, and the underdark, the underground, is special for a few ways. One, most of the time, unless you have underground adaptation, you cannot build farms down here, but we can. Secondly, you can excavate. A single unit is needed to excavate. So Eratus can excavate. This skeleton can excavate. And essentially we are digging deep. Deeper. And perhaps we could find true monstrosities or long forgotten treasure. Now we will be going again. This one? Yeah, let's get soul butter. This is an enchantment, I believe. Yes. This affects battle mage units and support units. Two things we don't have. But it will be important for us to have later. I believe our support unit is the Warlock. Which we cannot get. 
There they are. Beautiful warlock. Okay. And so I believe that's it. That's our wonderful first turn. There are eight AI rulers. We don't know who they are. We know nothing about them, but I did get an achievement. Digging for treasures. We found not a whole lot of treasures, but we did locate an infestation. This area, this red domain, will expand over time, and there is a camp inside of it that uh, we need to destroy. Now, we also unearth some grave danger. These fellers. It's not very scary, except for this thing. Rocking 90 hit points. So we're going to waddle our scout over here. And... Can I move you closer? Yes. So we're going to get out of danger and excavate this, because I haven't learned my lesson. Now with the Arantis, we're going to prepare for the Elemental. Looks like we have suffered no damages, so we'll move in this direction. And we'll clear out the Elemental, we'll clear out that, and then we'll want to try and get that cleared. Hello. I think it'll just attack me. Maybe I should have stayed in my own domain. Maybe. What spells can I cast? Oh, speaking of my own domain, we have 45 Imperium, which means we can attract a population and I can make this my own domain. That's mana, though. Mana's good. Money's good. Now, there is a resource note here. The Iron Deposit, meaning that whenever we get this, we will gain 10 production. It doesn't matter what we put here. We will always gain 10 production. But it's worth noting, you could just build stuff based on what you like, of course. But certain province enhancements will boost particular buildings. A boosted building has its cost reduced by 30%. That means its gold cost and its production cost, so it comes faster and is cheaper. So, it's worth keeping an eye out for the workshop that we are currently producing. One farm will reduce the build time. But, what else do we want? Is a question. A shrine is going to be in our very imminent future because our mana is low and we love Mana. So a quarry is not bad. A quarry itself also increases production, so we build stuff faster. So we could quarry on top of the iron deposit. Could gold on top of the iron deposit. Or maybe Forester, which gives us both food and production. Let's do that, shall we? And we'll end our turn here. Hopefully we do not unearth some other horror, long-forgotten horror. We are attacked. We have 420, they have 410. How does the auto-combat do here? The auto-combat thinks we die. All right. Let's not have that happen, shall we? I believe we have enough for one soul fire cast. So that's all swell and dandy. They are the aggressors, so I get to go first. Fantastic. This is unblockable terrain, so we could hole up here. Maybe here. Obscuring reduces the likelihood of being hit by ranged attacks, I believe. Hmm. No matter how we play this, we are going to want to be kind of grouped up. And Erratus can take quite a bit of smacking if he needs to. So let's see how the AI does. Okay, unsurprising. We do have enough for one soul fire. So we could cast it on this guy. Cast on these fellers. I think we cast it on this guy. Our one and only soul fire. Now, I believe you guys are... Resistance is just generic magic damage reduction, but what about your... I don't know how to check. Elemental resistances. I think we'll wait one more turn and see if we can get them to come to us. I don't really want you there. There's not really a good spot for this pursuer, unless we move forward to hold the shrooms. Which I don't think is a good idea, so we'll just wait. Is it end? I don't know. Ah, okay. 
That's right, he is a, all three all tier three elementals have something that allows him to teleport. Okay. That's good to know. So let's get our attempt at weakened here. We got it. Fantastic. Now let's get a charge to cancel retaliation. Which means Erratus can safely move away. And zap him with lightning. Not that it was effective, but it can be done. Now, we can get a fat flank with a skeleton. Kill it. Beautiful. Apparently, Giant Slayer isn't in effect, which is interesting. Now, with this Dark Warrior, we can choose to do a few things. Just kidding, we're mobilized. We can choose to defend. A wonderful choice. I say we zap them. See, our mana is already depleted. We need more mana. Need more mana. We're going to go ahead and chill. Oh, cheeky. Hmm. Did not realize you could do that. The skeletons are not long for this world. So, we can cancel this guy's retaliation. Back up a little bit. A lot of it. Ooh. So whenever a unit that has multiple models takes damage, it loses its total damage output because it is losing people to hit you, basically. That is a new change from Age of Wonders 3. Hmm. I think we're going to run this down. Our skeletons are going to die, but... Let's be honest, that's what skeletons do. So you're going to defense mode to live as long as possible, and you're just going to stab this guy. Alright. That was our turn. We have no further mana to cast magic. Unfortunately, that skeleton did fall. And this dark warrior doesn't seem long for this one. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. We have a chance. Okay, we'll go here. This is fine. The weaken is very important. It was very important that we got that weaken. 60%, 100%. Let's hope this kills it. It does not. Darn. I could have undone there after moving to try and YOLO the 60%. But instead we're just going to guarantee this kill. Get some regeneration rolling. And the skeletons are going to try and kill this guy. Okay. I do not believe... Ooh. Okay, the skeletons are going to fall. Like I said, that's what skeletons are for. So we're going to go ahead and kill this guy. We are going to get a charge. And Aratus is going to flank this poor fool. Unfortunately, do we defend? We're flanking this guy, so we'll go ahead and smack him. If I had magic, this would be a different story. That's okay. He's hitting Aratus, which is good. Now, another... Big change from previous Age of Wonders games and most 4Xs is you this little, like, what would you even call this? Different health bar? That is temporary HP. When you are in combat, you actually cannot restore the effect, the real health of your unit. Shank. So you can't cheese out some extra health during combat. It's very important to note that. We did win. Heavy losses, but we won. The dangers of digging too deep. Ooh, but we did get a pickup here. Hashtag worth. <laughs> Do we dare further dig? Of course we dare. For I am Eratus. Okay, so here is the Imperium Tree. The Imperium Tree is essentially your Empire's tech tree. 
And what this does is for every affinity that you have, we have five shadow and one astral affinity, you will go down one of the paths. So because we have five shadow affinity, we gain five shadow affinity per turn down the empire tree. And we have unlocked this. I don't have enough cream to do it right now, but we have unlocked gain 50 knowledge per level of heroes defeated in combat. Later on, this will be amazing. Right now, not so effective. We are also very slowly going down the astral tree and ironically, as it would be, the shadow and astral affinities have tremendous synergies between each other because the astral affinity likes to summon stuff and the shadow affinity can reduce the upkeep of stuff. Of summon stuff. There we go. Magic origin, excuse me. So this will infect our undead in the future as well. And then all affinities, no matter what you have, will be going down the general tree. This will be a com combination of all your different affinity types. And is where you get excavation. This is just general stuff. So like seafaring. I hated having to research basic seafaring in Age of Wonders 3. Road building, more cities. We have a city cap of three. Uh, you know, that sort of stuff. And I believe there's teleporter down there at the very bottom. As well, a good change. We have yet another Sunderer. Go join the army. So we have two Dark Warriors and two Sunderers. The Sunderers are our application of Weaken. Okay. Oh, there's another change that's happened that's actually pretty stellar. So this new unit only has 15 movement left. We can move them here. And we can bring Erratus and attack this unit and it will be drawn in. The difference here is that you used to have to walk in like this weird incoherency, this weird triangle formation. But now you can press this button and any army in this radius will reinforce the attacking army. The difference though is that you can only have three units max or three armies max. This should be an easy auto. Great. Mana. Now because we are outside of our domain, we're only healing five health per turn instead of the 25. So hopefully nothing evil spawns out of here, but hey, these are the risks you have to take. Erantis has leveled up. There's Warfare, which is for frontlining, essentially. Although Sprint would be good for us, in case we get caught. There's Battle Magic. This will increase the potency, well, of our spellcasting. Ooh, that would be really good. Actually... And then there's support. And support is phenomenal. And I'm going to be building Erratus with both support and battle magic. Because, of course, he is not only a necromancer, reinforcing his own units and making them better, but he is also an Archmage within his own right. I think I'm going to take Lightning Evoker just to give me some AoE right now. Probably always go Experience Leader first, but, you know... Do as I say, not as I do. We have a new Empire Development. We do. Was this that one? That one that I can't afford? Possibly. How's our city doing? We probably want something. Perhaps another skeleton? For me to kill? We could attract population here. Which might not be the worst idea I've ever had. Let's get a farm. Probably down here. That way we can boost this thing we're building. And get food, of course, so we grow faster. Okay. Alrighty dighty. You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me! Well, okay, hold on. Everyone back. Uh, so that, I can't see anymore. That is a bone dragon. Lovely. There's also the bone daddy. He looks very different, doesn't he? Uh, they are very tanky. A bone wyvern. And, of course, another skeleton. Great. Um, 
I didn't check how far they could move. But hopefully not this far. Okay, we're fine. Everything's fine. He says, trapped in his... Did I build another pursuer, actually? Trapped in his city. Excuse me. Thank you. So this pursuer can just follow Erratus around and then join uh, the stack. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about it. You're going to stay here. Everything's going to be fine. I can cast no spells. Great. And then... I can't even afford to recruit anybody. Oh, I can. I guess we can try and get a Dark Rider. Excuse me, Dark Warrior. All right. Everything's going hunky-dory. Hello. Okay. Bone Dragon. Yep. Bone Dragon. It looks like we are full HP, so we could go on the offense here. Um, do we want to? Probably. And this is why you never dig too deep. Okay. It's a risky battle. Yeah, you don't say. I do have a lot of mana now, which is nice. I'm pretty sure the auto will kill me, so let's, just, let's not even look. Let's not even think about it. Keep it out of our minds. Uh, so there are two things we have going for us. If you can believe it. <sighs> One, lots of mana, as mentioned. You can cast quite a few spells. The other is they're all... melee. So I'm not going to get shot by random stuff. And our skeleton, if we can get it into a good position... Brain, please. Is very good at killing the dragon. In fact, it will be... Pretty good against everything here. Except the other skeleton. So. And we can always sacrifice our scout if we have to. The scout is unimportant. It can die. Now, one of the bad news is that the dragon does have a breath attack. We cannot use spells on the first turn, so I didn't do anything. Don't have enough souls for soul fire. They are, of course, resistant to ice, because why not? Of course they would be. Can I hold this better? I don't think so. Because they're currently blocked. I am concerned about this, though. Okay, I'm just going to sit here. Eratus is in the front line. I am aware of that. Here comes the breath. Okay. That wasn't awful. Okay. Uh, let's get the skeleton down first. To get well, we can pull a radius out now. First strike. So we put we back up with the radius. Wow, it's annoying that that's not a kill. But it should be a kill combined with the scout. Okay, good. Let's see. I'm not going to 50-50 do that. Perfect. Now, the reason why the skeleton is good against the bone dragon is because the skeleton starts with giant slayer. Uh, it is going to hurt me back. But that's a price we have to pay for fighting a fucking dragon. In fact, I should have shot it first to see if I could weaken it, which I could not, so. Ah, of course you have charge block. Why wouldn't you have charge block? Now, I'm trying to get rid of the dragon first because the dragon has a tail swipe. How does this work? Three adjacent units, okay. So the Dark Warrior can go in here and just smack this. Although you should be pinned by this guy. 
So do I want to... I might keep this Dark Warrior back. Which seems silly, I am aware. But... I think we'll wait. Okay. You're not going to move, are you? Oh, you are. Here's a Tail Swipe. Okay. In hindsight, this may not have been a bad idea. Did that cancel your retaliation? It did not. Is that because you're scary? Probably. Okay. We shanked. I might even overchannel. Just to get any amount of damage in. That hurts. Alright, dragon dead. Oh. Dragon dead. This guy weakens. Fat retaliate. We could do... I think I'm just going to sit here to be annoying. Oh, that's something. Cool. Oh, it came back. Please don't go first. It went first. All right, that's fine. Do I have to kill that, though? Weaken. I can't keep a skeleton alive to save my life. I do have to kill it. Okay. Annoying, but fine. In hindsight, I don't think I wanted to get this. I mean, it's pretty good. It's just... We can't make use of the Sundered Resistance yet. I have to wait. Wait until we have more. Skeleton dead? We did it, team. And I only got nine souls for that. I feel like I should have gotten more, but that's all right. That means I can get another skeleton. <laughs> you guessed it. All right, let's get the storehouse. We can even get the library. No, no, we want the experimentation chambers. And for a measly 15 Imperium, we can expand. Which I think we're going to do. So, if I were going to expand... I want to go here for the mana node. We need some quarries, don't we? I can go for another forester. That's fine. I like that they're, they're split, you know? It's some food, it's some production. It's perfect. Best of both worlds, really. Your orders are required. Don't die. I realize it's a tall order right now, but um, that's what I've got. Okay. Shall I go excavate this and see what horror pops out? I'm sure it'll be fine. Soul binders. Again, not useful now. Later. Uh, enemy units in target army gain soulbound until the next time they are in battle. Okay. I want this. So what this does is this gives Cole the Weak, which is our natural dark benefit. So all units that are from the dark culture get this by default. We deal 20% damage to weakened units. And if we attack a weakened unit, we gain regeneration. What this does is this will give it to non-dark units that we may recruit of this type. Which is very useful later. But for now, Baleful Curse. Okay. Hopefully nothing spawns from that. I do need to go this way, however. Okay, as mentioned... Oh, Distant Evocation. Alright, I changed my mind. We're going with that. 
That's amazing. This is basically what warlocks have. And it's an AoE weekend and stuff. We'll go down the support tree eventually. Uh, Soulbinder. Not important at the moment. Empire skill. Okay, so benefits for free cities with Whispering Stones. I... Uh, do you think there will be free cities in the underground? Because so far, the answer to that question is no. I wonder. Hey, look, we can expand farther this direction. Okay, have we found the edge? Nope. Not even a little bit. Hold. I'm like in the middle of the underground. That's not exactly a position I want to be in. If I can help it. Okay. So it is a brigand camp. How scary is it? Can't see. It looks like they're about to wake up as well. Which is a terrifying thought. Our new Dark Warrior has arrived. Our friends, who will guide us to glory, I hope. Do I bother to make another skeleton? Sure. I'll try. Your orders are to chill. There's the Dark Warrior. An evil presence lingers in the land. Yes, I can see it. Day seven. And not a whole lot's happening. I fought a dragon. I mean, that's pretty cool. We have located the enemy. Now, because Irantis is on a wolf, and he's the best, he can initiate this combat, and this should be an easy auto. Well, shoulda, woulda, coulda. So these are a bunch of brigands. There were a lot of these in Age of Wonders 3. And it looks like there's a lot of everything. Okay, that's fine. Um, I don't know how aggressive they plan on being against me. But, you know. We can get a little spicy. They do have archers, worth noting, but so do I. I think pursuers are really good. We'll see if it remains that way, though. Looks like they have chosen death. Oh, this is a single target thing. I thought this was an AoE thing. Well, that is unfortunate. You know what is an AoE thing, though? Thing I don't have yet. Okay, well. I could do that. I wonder what Electrified is. Don't know. And they resist it, so. Because we sundered their resistance, that will do more damage. All very cool. And let's see what our archers can get up to. Not a whole lot, because I blocked the way. Oh. Okay. Wow. Really? Wow. Hmm. How do I get more range on you? Okay, so I'm going to charge in with these guys. And we're going to move forward with this guy, but wait here. Here. Now we're going to get our archers in. I should have moved Iranis. That was a mistake. My bad. I was just so excited to do new stuff that you know, I forgot. Don't want to go too crazy here. The AI lost the archers, and I'd rather not repeat their mistakes. Okay. That was a turn. Let's see how the AI reacts. Okay, good shots. Good shots. So instead of losing an archer, I lose a dark warrior? Nope. Not yet, anyway. Oh, that's what Lechify does. Okay. 
All right. I'm going to have to work real hard to save this character. That is 100% in this situation because of me. I think the last two units are scouts. Nice. Cool. Saved them all. Gotta save them all. Cool. We got some production. The Nightmare Mount and Helmet. Well, well, well. Eratus, a wolf no longer. Now a nightmare. Very fast movement, a cavalry unit, and has intimidating aura. So if there's any adjacent enemy unit, they have a 90% chance of losing 5 morale. But it does not affect tier 5 units, tier 5 mythic units, or heroes. Isn't it beautiful? Amount appropriate for our Lord of the Dead. There's only one type of mount more appropriate, and hopefully we find it. Hasn't digging gotten you in trouble this entire campaign so far? Yes, dear viewer, it has. <laughs> but surely, surely nothing could go wrong again. Okay, the experimentation chambers are up. We need five pop to boost this. And wouldn't you know, we can do it. I don't want any of this yet. That's seafaring. Don't think I need to do seafaring. Cool. So let's pop. What do we feel that we need? I mean, there's only one accessible gold mine, so I guess we'll take that. Now, we can get the Dread Spire. Good, good. All right. Let us move on. Our opponents are moving. Pop goes the weasel. It's a spoder. Aren't there supposed to be like treasure buried or something? Okay, well, I'm fairly confident this dark warrior is going to die. Unless I proactively attempt to save it. Which is not something I'm overly interested in doing. Where do I send you? Wait, am I at a dead end? I think I am. Hmm. That's not good. That's not good at all. So I can't go that way. Well. I'm sorry, you what? Ah. <sighs> I bet it was the Matriarch. Because I think this Tier 3 Spoder... Well, it can spawn units. That's fun. But this is an, an AoE that always hits 18 damage. And... It is an... Like I said, an AoE. Great. So what we need to do is we need to unite together and be very cautious. And probably let Erratus do a little bit of tanking. Which I realize, dangerous endeavor, dangerous proposition, but probably all I got. Another thing I got is spamming this shit. Over channel. Spam more. Oh, I do have the bail for... Oh, I still don't have it. Ah! I should have waited. Are you slowed? Please be slowed. I don't know how to check. Well, I hope you're slowed. <sighs> so this is the tier 2 one, I think. Yes. You have a web. That is an AoE as well. So... It wouldn't, it would behoove me a little bit to sunder you and try and kill you. Or at least spread out.
I don't think the matriarch counts as a large target for Giant Slayer. Uranus is definitely going to get tied up. And I 100% don't want to be here. Okay. Well. I mean, we can tank the front line with the Spoder as well. We can hold the line. If I go here, they'll have to make a few choices. Which I'm sure the AI will love doing. Alright, how screwed am I? Let's see. Okay, there's the AoE we were afraid of. The weaken helped a lot, I think. Eratus is very tied up. Now, if Eratus dies, it's not that big of a deal. I realize that is kind of heretical, but it's really not that big of a deal. I don't... I mean, I could try and, like, charge in. You know, get eaten alive by all this shit. I also definitely should try to weaken it first. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm going to try and weaken this one. Got it? Okay, now it will do less damage when it shoots me. That's good to know. Because it will shoot me. Am I safe here? No. Am I safe anywhere? No. I could try and move away. But I think your rat is just defense. Which leaves one remaining question. What do you do? Perhaps go over here. Be a distraction, Carnifex. I realize calling him a Carnifex may be a little bit of an exaggeration. But it may still be possible. Now if I had the staff, I could heal this guy. But as it stands, the only way to heal people is to hit people with weakening, which is part of what makes the Dark Culture hard to play. So, I guess you just get in position and then end the turn. And Iratus is dead. You can jump. Do I not retaliate? Okay. Good. Funny how the skeletons are being the most effective right now. So. Good. I can't over channel. That's fine. Probably. Probably fine. Is there a reason? Oh, I can only use it once. Oh. Really? I don't think it was that way in the preview build. They nerfed me. They probably knew they had to. They had to nerf Eratus. We can hit, please. No, oh, you're you're mobilized. I shudder to think what this thing is gonna do. Do I dare? I don't think I dare. I went through all this effort to try and keep him alive. Okay, I don't dare. We'll do it next turn, probably. Please don't die, Redis. Oh! Okay, the morale is getting really low, so that's good. That's here. So as you can see, too many allies have died, so their morale is super low, so they're fumbling and doing less damage and all sorts of good things. I think we won, team. 
I think we did it. Flank, 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 flank. Cancel retaliation. And then stab. Oh, Giant Slayer is an effect for the Matriarch. We did it! That one spider was just um, a summon, it looks like. Wow. Okay. So far, being underground has been absolutely mortifying. Let's um let's get experience leader, shall we? Not that. <laughs> experience leader. This will make it so that everyone gains experience per turn so that they level up faster. And of course, leveling up can be very important, like these little skeletons. As they level up, they gain health, and then damage, and then retaliation, so they can hit again. What do you do? You're already an elite. You do more damage. Crit. Okay. And you? Eagle Eye. I think that's plus one range as well. That's pretty good. All right, next turn, the Dread Spire is here. I legit think I make another skeleton. I also think I want another Outrider. I could... We're about to get this. Which is something I do want. But, I also want the skill pipe. So digging too deep has been pretty bad for us, but it also hasn't been the end of the world. Like, we've gotten a lot of good stuff out of this. A lot of terrain to continue expanding. So, do we go south or do we go north? That's the question. We also haven't found an entrance to the overworld yet, either. I think we're closest to the west? Shall we go southwest? Hmm. This looks open and horrifying. What can we see through the fog of war? Uh, not much. That, I think, is an overground passage. Which might be worth exploring. That's something. That's also an, under, an above ground passage. Is that lava? Oh, that's horrifying. I want to see. I wonder what that is. Not the first one we've seen. I don't know how well you can see this on YouTube. All right, let's go. Um... Now, if we're being canonically correct, Erratus doesn't visit the overworld until the very end. So I say... We go this way. We are now tier 2, everybody. And we can construct the Wizard Tower, which gives us increased Imperium and increased Vision Range. Also gives us some stuff. We also have a special improvement, a special province improvement. There can be one of these per province. And it is the Dark Forge. Giving us draft and gold. Uh, and additional draft per adjacent quarry or mine. And it is a unit deployment location, meaning that if we had a battle near our city, we could deploy our units there instead of at the city itself. Interesting. Let's start with the Wizard's Tower, which you can actually see in the city when it is built, which is cool. Our Warlock is here, and so is our Night Guard, which is our Tier 2 Pole Arm Unit. Let's get a Warlock. It's going to take a while. And we can go ahead and grab this. This will reduce the upkeep of Magic Origin units, which I believe is Le Skeleton. They are undead. Full arm. Magic origin. Yes. So they're now cheaper, even though they were already cheap. They're now super cheap. We have finally unlocked the Baneful Curse. Thank you. 
the Bone Daddy and give it to me. Yes. Now, if we wanted to, we could use some mana to shuffle this and find new things to research. We can also use mana to lock it. Which I might lock this and research the Bone Daddy. And yes, we got our new Empire skill. It's very good. The Bone Daddy is also a magical origin unit. And I believe there are two ways to get the Bone Daddy, believe it or not. Uh, can we reach that? Yes. Cool. We are going to want to cast this. So we'll start casting it now. It's not going to affect anything that we have on the field at the moment, but it will affect new warlocks that are battle mages. Please don't spawn anything horrifying. I'm tired of having horrifying fights. I'm lich. <sighs> what are you now? Okay, it's just a bunch of skeletons in the bone dragon. <sighs> yeah, it's a risky battle, all right. So yeah, here's the start of our wizard's tower. Look at it. We are going to go ahead and grab the library. This will increase our research. Um, we are going to want this in time. The prison cells and the crypts by themselves just give you a little bit of income, a trickle of income. But when we start fighting other people and start claiming heroes, that's when things get a little different. We might want the granary as well. Hmm. We're definitely going to want the shrine. Do I not have a quarry? No, I don't. Let's fix that. There we go. I needed that. Okay. Well... Let's go fight another dragon. Another bone dragon. Now, of the dragons, the bone dragon is the weakest, of course, because that's just the way it is, I guess. One of you have overwhelm tactics. Interesting, okay. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but boy, is it getting tiresome. <laughs> I could have just started on the overworld and avoided all this headache. Don't go there. Come back. That's going to be a spot for my archers. Once again, the dragon is going to be important. Excuse me, the skeletons are going to be important to uh, fighting the dragon. I am down to... Also looks like I'm about to get my skeletons killed, huh? Down to two archers. Kind of problematic. Can't cast a spell on the first turn. Oh, there's a warrior that move back there. Okay. Can you move through? You can, okay. Good. I'm trying to predict where this dragon's gonna go. It'd be cool if he went straight for my archers. That would be swell. All right, let's get this. Wait. Is this permanent? So Sundered Resistance and Sundered Defense, three turns, got it, is basically just a reduction of these values. So I could overcast and do it again, or I could overcast and do damage. Well, I'm definitely overcasting. The question is, am I doing it again? Because the Sunder Defense and Sunder Resistance stack up to five times. So it wouldn't be an awful idea to run it back. While they're all stacked up. Because we can Ice Shackles them no matter what position they're in. Okay, forward that. Not great, but not awful. Okay. All right. 
Uh, so the downside here is I can only get one unit in on that, and I want it to be the skeletons. Good. Probably just Ice Shackle. Okay. Good smack. We'll tie this guy up with Giant Slayer. The skeletons also don't really care about poison, which is a big deal. A good big deal for us. Uh, you've already shot. I wanted to move you forward first, but that's okay. Go here. Just shoot him. I missed one and hit that guy on accident. Eratus, Lord of the Dead. Can't believe that doesn't kill you. Shall I kill this guy? Let's try and electrify. Let's see what we get. Yes? No? Maybe so. We did electrify the dragon. Okay, that's good. Good. Good, good, good. You're in a very awkward position. I'm sorry, dear. Um, Do I put damage on the dragon? Fortunately, you have to go the long way. Sure. The dragon's the threat. We all know the dragon is the threat. You're going to come back. You're not going to come back, are you? You wouldn't do that to me. Okay. Ow. Okay. Hmm. That's not good. Eratus can back off. Because he is... Blanking. 90% shots from here. Cool. Um. Cool. You died to a scout. That's embarrassing. So, you can just punch that. You block the charge. He has first strike. No big deal. Get a bunch of stabs here. Weaken them up. Oh, okay, we did it. Oh. You know what? I shackles just because. Just because I can. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, well done, skeletons. Where would I be without you? We did lose one skeleton, but that's okay. All right. Oh, I see another border. I hope that's a free city and not a player. But Fabe, what happens if it's a player, you ask? Well, war. War is the only option. Okay. Who needs orders? You don't need orders. Stay. The Bone Daddy is here. The Brand of Wrath. So this is what I was talking about, calling the weak on non-dark units. And I know I spent mana to save this, and it's a good thing to do, but I think I'm going to wait. We're going to wait. This will go on our undead. When it, that one polymer it was referring to, it was this one living skeleton. Speaking of skeletons, we can construct the Bone Daddy in one of two ways. The first method is to take two skeletons and put them together. Pretty creative, huh? The other method is to just produce one. But as you can see, it costs 30 souls to just produce one. So we're going to make one skeleton, put him in front of the warlock. He'll come out, we'll run him over, we'll mash him together, and we'll have a bone daddy. That's, I'm going to hurry him. He has no clothes on. Soul binders is ready. I can't cast it because we have no units. That's fine. We can keep spells charged and ready to go. Oh, oh. Creating the Bone Daddy with two skeletons requires 10 souls. Okay, so it's 30 either way. Yeah, I know. We have our first astral thing, which just gives us casting points, which is probably worth getting. I'm gonna take it. 
We cast a lot of spells. Yes, I know. Ready. Good to go. Who knew the underground start would be so difficult? It is a free city. Baroness Akara Eskalek of the free city Gloomhallow greets you with a wily smile. Salutation, Supreme Necromancer, Death Lord Eratus. Your reputation precedes you. It pleases us to meet a Supreme Necromancer who shares our convictions. Nevertheless, we ask you to respect Gloomhallow's independence. But are you worthy? A distraught member of the Shadow Elves Council requests an urgent meeting. Terrible news, my supreme necromancer. Our, our scouts have reported sightings of an army of blessed souls. We can't have that roaming our lands. Our forebears told legends of these creatures, that they are bringers of death. No, they're not. I'm the bringer of death. And that seeing such a creature heralds 77 years of bad luck. We must drive it away immediately to prevent unrest. In our lands, the Shadow Elves will panic when they notice the Blessed Souls are nearby. Great. So, we're just gonna go do it. It's a quest. Where is it? Okay. So, I have to do a few things. First things first, mine. Take the free stone and give it to them. Now, diplomacy is very important in Age of Wonders 4. Just like in Spellforce. But you don't have to do it. We could just go straight toward Gloom Hollow and crush them and run them over. But because they are of our same faction, they are evil aligned, uh, they like us quite a bit. So we can actually make use of vassalage for once uh, and do things. So we will. Uh, I didn't need to move backwards. Whoops. I was thinking about making the bone good daddy, but I don't have any souls, so you know. Oh, I do need to move backwards. Duh, I need to go this way. <laughs> Duh. Okay. I can move through your territory, right? I hope so. You have a lot of stacks already. See, the AI cheats. Is that... That's 19 units. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. Our Warlock is here, which means we can finally cast the Soulbinder's Enchantment. Look at them. There's only one of them, but there are somehow many of them. So this means they now have a chance to inflict the Soulbound status, which will, I assume, give us more souls. Let's try and get everyone into this fight. If we can, put you there, bring a rat here. Hell, oh. encountering the Harbingers of Misfortune. After a tense search and long march, yeah, okay, your army comes face to face with the roaming blessed souls. The sight of the terrible creatures caused fear to ripple through the Shadow Elves in your army. The deafening silence betrays the hesitation of your troops. Their morale won't hold. Hmm. Or, that is a lot of money. It is only two of them. Don't be so disheartened. <sighs> so I'm retrying because we lost a skeleton. Now, typically, lost a skeleton, boo hoo. However, this quest will give me enough souls to make a bone daddy. And you better believe we're going to make a Bone Daddy. I wonder how many people are just confused I'm calling him that because they haven't seen or forgot Eratus. I'm honestly quite curious if you are still watching. Thanks, by the way. Hello. Are you here because of Age of Wonders or are you here because of Eratus or both? I'm quite curious. All right. Anyway. Time to move on. Cast the Baneful Curse. Over channel. And then Shackle. Sure. A decent combination. Oh, you have Lightning Weakness, you say. Well, well, well. Hmm. 
I'll just shoot you down. Now these are little warlocks. They have weakening bolts, and they have a sundering curse, which is what Eratus has. So we're actually going to want quite a lot of warlocks, I think. Maybe. I don't know how I feel about pushing you that far forward. But I did it. It was done. Need to move up more. Okay, just not gonna get a shot. Just chill. Alright, who are you going after? Ow. No wonder a skeleton died. Hmm. What to do? Good weekends. Wow. Okay. Let's just do this. And that should be a charge kill. No! Wow, okay. You're just not ever going to be able to hit that guy. Hmm. Now it's a charge kill. Now it's a charge kill. Huh? Don't huh me. Boom. Good flanking. Uh, Eratus has already moved. Can you reach? No. Because I'm bad at preemptively positioning. Are you really going to live? You are. Okay. The skeleton. Fine. He fumbles. Although I am condemned. And then he died to electrify. That's okay. That's... My regret for picking that has lessened. Marvelous work, Death Lord Eratus. Just marvelous. We managed to contain any panic with regard to the Blessed Soul sighting. So it seems we are in the clear. All thanks to you, of course. The Shadow Elves will hear of your victory. Perhaps our superstitious beliefs can be transformed into a virtue of our people. So we could get a bunch of draft or a bunch of production. I do have a lot of money, so we can probably start pumping out more units for the draft. Okay. Now, there wasn't anything in production at the moment, but as you can see, we now have a zero cost to make things, and I'm probably going to make another Warlock. Then we'll get a Night Garden queue. You can follow around Uranus. Where are the Skeleton? Boom. The Bone Daddy has arrived. So that is a shock unit, just like the Dark Warriors, but the Bone Daddy can eat corpses to restore HP. In Age of Wonders 3, this gave him HP and damage increases, and it was kind of insane. When this unit dies, it spawns an enfeebled skeleton unit. Okay. All right. The Bone Daddy's here. And of course, the Bone Daddy has to join Eratus. Naturally. I want the Warlock in here as well. So we're, we're kind of creating another stack for another hero. Now, we can get heroes in a few ways. You are about to trespass. <sighs> okay, I have to wait two turns. So I'm going to back up just so the AI doesn't do anything stupid. Because it might. You never know. I had a thought and now it is completely just derailed. What was the thought? I don't know. It's gone, sorry. Eaten by the AI. I wish there was a way around you, but there really isn't, huh? I suppose on the one hand, it's fine because 
I needed to move this way anyway, and it's going to take me two turns anyway. But still. Uh, what I did was I paid Imperium to increase my relationship. Which I believe can be done every, like, level. Give me more research. My research is trash. Oh, we can get some defenses. I don't think we need any defenses right now. Watch me get attacked. Uh, I need two quarries for that. Okay. I can build one here. That's the only thing I can build there. Underground laboratory. I want this as well. I need two farms. I have one farm. Okay, so the next expansion is going to be a farm. And it's going to go right here. Because I want this. This gives us research and gold. I believe this is a unique thing to the dark culture. It might be unique to those underground. I don't actually know. But a lot of the dark culture unique buildings give research on top of whatever they're supposed to give. This red symbol means it, there's a unit in the fog of war that has moved. Okay. We have open borders now. I don't know why you didn't pick that up. But the AI in Age of Wonders is infamous for not picking stuff up, so... I'd put you here if I could. Soul Overflow, fantastic. We have researched enough spells to open up the next Tome of Magic. Now, we could... Remember, Tomes give us a lot of affinity. We could go down Double Shadow. Just commit. This would give us access to Ice Damage and another unit, the White Witch. But, Erratus doesn't really use Ice Magic. At all. The only thing in the entire game is the Curse of the Unfrozen for, you know, making the Unfrozen unit. So, I thought it would make sense to go further down the Astral Affinity and pick up some other magic. Now, the way we, we can... We have two choices here. We can go with the Tome of Evocation, which will give us some lightning stuff. We can do extra lightning damage. We can summon a Lesser Storm Spirit, which would play into our magic origin unit cost reduction. Or we can go the Tome of Warding. These are more about defenses. We can give all sorts of buffs to our units, which I was thinking about doing. I have no support. I don't think I have a single support unit in my faction. Ha. Huh. So I'm probably going to go Evocation, honestly. This is a very good Tome of Magic. Like, if you don't know what to pick up, this is a pretty good one. Of magic. It follows that you can employ it in Shock a more danger. devastating fashion in order to visit harm onto your foes. Uh-huh. The thunder and the fury of the skies. It's going to get Fulmination. Negotiations have succeeded. We are now in the Pact of Cooperation. So I can use more Imperium to boost this. And because it only costs 35, I will. I believe we can do this, like I said, every tier. So I can't do it for another three turns. Then we'll have the Pact of Loyalty, and then we'll have the Vassalage. Now, there are a few ways you can vassalize people. Uh, this is one of them. This is also known as the Peaceful Way, which isn't very Erratus-like, but I'm not fighting this, let's be honest. And like I said, they're my people. But the other way, which is more Erratus-like, is you can forcefully vassalize people after beating the crap out of them. Oh, here's an Ancient Wonder. Okay. That's kind of sketch. So this is an Ancient Wonder that counts as a conduit. And when Annex gives 5 Imperium and 25 mana, not bad. Also, 2 knowledge per research post in City Domain, and adds a Blessed Soul into the Rally of Lieges. We don't have access to the Rally of Lieges just yet, I don't know if I'm able to do this, though. This is a Silver Wonder, so two star, two of three skill difficulties. It might be too much for our fledgling... Our fledgling faction. Our fledgling lord. But it would be a tremendous boost to our power. Yo, hello. Hello. Uh, after today's diplomatic negotiations, the Baroness of Gloomhallow announces that their city wants to celebrate a god deer they are aware of. They are in awe of. Necron. Mm -hmm. They wish to commemorate the day Necron became a god deer and intend to make this an annual event. 
"'Twas my idea," Akara declares, "'and my people's morale has never been better. May we all be blessed by the secrets and decay of Necron. Surely you will contribute to the celebrations of the great Necron. What can we expect from you, O Lord of the Dead, Eratus?" Um... Well, I do, oh, I lose. Necron was a fool. You are to worship me instead. This costs Imperium, but we will instantly go to the Pact of Loyalty. And I had a lot of Imperium in hand, so, no. All right, we have our Night Guard, our Tier 2 Polearm unit. It's okay. Pretty pole army. He'll do fine. Yeah. We're gonna keep waddling. You didn't excavate that, huh? Should I excavate that for you? What could possibly go wrong? I think I can reach that with just a Nice. We have acquired a Fulmination. This is another damaging spell. And I suppose now we'll get the Brand of Wrath. We could grab an Evoker. But I can't say I particularly care. The Astral Inspiration. Whenever a new research skill is researched, the knowledge of another random skill is reduced by 25%. Not bad. We can also begin building rogues. And we can increase our city cap. This one can be done infinitely. Although, of course, the cost will increase. We also... I've access to death magic, which could be on the table. And the right of the Crypt Blades. This will give us the Crypt Blade. And whenever someone kills something, they become a zombie. Hopefully we can find a melee hero. Now, you can... You obtain a hero whenever you acquire another city. But you can also buy another hero at any point. However... Because we would be over our hero cap, they would cost more money to recruit, and they would cost 30 gold additional upkeep. So that would be... Kind of sketched. Huh. Disease. A duelist. Against heroes deals a bunch of bonus damage. Okay. Order adept. Don't really want order. The Astral Enchanter. Ooh. That's really good. Because this will affect all of our undead as well. Ares the Elder. Uh, but I did want Fighter, of which there's this guy. Huh. I'd be very broke, though. The Pact of Loyalty. All right, so now we have the Rally of Leeches, which will be happening in a few turns. And the Rally of Leeches, basically, is for every vassal that you have, you can get additional units. This also will affect some of the Ancient Wonders, like the Temple of Gaudir will give us Blessed Spirits, Blessed Souls, whatever, which aren't a very erratic thing to have, but they are pretty good. It looks like I have opened up a pathway for that city to explore. And nothing. Great. I love opening up nothing. Please don't tell me this is a dead end. No, there's even a road here. With more to excavate! Uh, great. We can also check out this temple. And you just keep following me. The Lord's gonna take forever. Okay. The wonders of being underground, huh? Maybe I should have just done standard distance. I didn't want to, like, spawn on top of my enemies. And I wanted a big map for us to explore and conquer. And erode, you know, that sort of stuff. Okay. I don't know 
health I quick saved. Okay, you attend the you approach the temple of the Gaudier. Fading, unreadable words are emblazoned across the first footstone. You see a crumbling statue at the far end of the temple, depicting an ancient unknown Gaudier. Before you can progress further, a tyrant knight appears. Followed by a booming oh dear. A booming voice. You walk in divine halls of a Gaudier long lost. Are you a supreme necromancer to be its new patron? Prove you are worthy through this trial. Confess it, and you prove you worthy of our devotion. Your army looks at you curious how you will respond. Uh. So. If we just go in, all of our units will be condemned. Which isn't great. Or we can pay some money and then we won't be condemned for now. Shall we try it? I have not good feelings about this team. Oh. All right, the Tyrant Knights. Very cool looking. Dominating Ratkin. Demoralizing Heavy Charge. Defense Mode Anointed People. 10 status resists. Okay, Legion of Zeal. Of course. Ah, uh, you know, skeletons would be really helpful here. They have these weird Lightbringer things. Which can convert me. That's annoying. I might need to back off here. I don't have a whole lot of tanky boys here, I just realized. I have a golem, and that's it. I didn't lose my money, did I? So I think I'm going to retreat until we get the night guard here. Because this guy will be really strong against them. Hopefully he'll be enough. Until then. Let's diggy diggy hole. And we do have a lot of Imperium. Do I want to grab something? Probably not. Roads wouldn't be awful. My growth is so slow. Let's build. Did I get what I wanted? I have been pinged. The pinging. Um. Do do do. Do I just do food? What does the mint need? Three farms? Are you crazy? They are crazy. But I wouldn't mind it. And farms are good for me. You know? Maybe I do granary first? No, no. I have no heroes in my dungeon. Do we want more units? Probably. Okay. Ah, uh, just chill. All in due time. All in due time. Alright. Don't diggy diggy hold me into death. Please? Ooh. Now see, this is what I've been waiting for. Rewards. Okay. Can't diggy diggy that. This is also another pathway. Which pathway do I take? That looks like another temple of the god here. That looks like an open path. So you can go this way, and you can go that way. You know what I needed? Another scout. Uh, also, well, eventually if I absorb you, I'll be able to eat it. But I was going to say, I could build an outpost here to construct another city. But I'm going to get these guys soon. 
in two turns. In one turn. And then in a few turns from that, I can go ahead and absorb them. This feels like a really slow start for Brutal AI. I have a bad feeling about what's going to happen when I go over grounds. Oh, they expanded. Look at that. Hello. Devouring the light. Tales of your dealings with the Shadow Affinity travel far. A company of stalwart paladins proclaim they will overthrow you. Great. The zealous shield mages of the Iron Pillar are ever eager to vanquish a manifestation of shadow in their realm. The company, led by a defender, does not even care to what degree you actually pose a threat to the land and its peoples. You are simply a means to bring honor and titles to their names. The nearby shield mages seek to cast you into the light. They deserve to be subjected to your terrible power. So this is a shadow... Sorry about the pinging. A shadow crisis event. So we can either... <laughs> we can either accept it and we'll gain the shadow boon, which will give us a bunch of benefits, or we can do something different, which will give us a crisis that will affect our city's stability. Now, we don't actually care about stability, being that we are the dark domain, the dark culture, but they are welcome. Welcome to die. Please don't be near my base. Please don't be near my base. Oh, thank you. Desecrated temple. Another silver. Does the game think I'm made out of units? I guess I'm going this way. This won't be too bad. <sighs> Can I diggy diggy any holes? No. Just keep exploring. Night Guard's coming. You're sitting. I think I can do that fight. Oh, wow. Okay. Take that. We've acquired a Tranquility Pool, which is giving us... Reducing the knowledge required to research spells. That's because they have become our vassal. And we now get a portion of their income. We can also trade with them. So we can trade 8 mana for 12 production. That's a trade I'm willing to take. Could also continue to boost our allegiance, which is fine. Keep on, keep it on. Mint's coming, another guy's coming. Let's, what do we want? Cure. Ten gold income per mine, and I have two. That is a big boy, though. I think I want... Look, I like more mana stuff, but unfortunately, none to be had. Maybe another quarry? I have loads of quarries. Let's get a forester. Sure. Why not? And we'll be going to tier 3. It is boosted because we reached 10 population, and we're growing in 18 bloody turns. Yeah, okay. We're ready to cast the Brand of Wrath, which we will. Negotiations were successful. Yes, new vassalage, new vassalage. Good, good, good. You join this army, we go into the temple, and that's probably it for today. A two-hour special. Full of horror and wonder. Horror and wonder. Okie dokie. So we have six turns until we have Flourishing Vassalage. I think I can absorb them. Yes. So in six turns I can absorb them if I desire. Or we can leave them be. Oh, there's an underground passage here. Okay, well. I'm probably going to poke my head up. Okay, you can reach, finally. Um, I'm probably going to take the archer out. Okay. I have no idea how to save. No! Okay, the game crashed. But, I think we're fine. Is that... Ah. 
I can't see I expected there to be guys on top of the underground passage. But, hey. What can I say? Alright, we'll pull you out. Pull you in. Explore. Alright, we can do this. I believe. Now remember, we chose to give them money. So we shouldn't be condemned. Hopefully remembers that. Now. I'm concerned about these guys mind controlling me. They cannot control Iranis. And I don't believe they can control the undead. But everyone else is susceptible. Look that way, please. Okay. We should be good. We can cast next turn. We're going to cast the Baneful Curse. Over here. Oh, I want to get both knights. I could double cast it. Which might be the play. Although, let me see what my other spells are. We're going to un untag that. Yes. All right, how are we doing? I actually want to pull you guys back, I think. Okay. God, that's going to hurt so much. Only one of them can hit Iratus. No, they both can if they want to. But in a way, that works out. I'm assuming they're going to go that way. Let's see. Okay. So that guy is mind controlling Iratus until I kill him. Which at this rate is going to be much slower than I would like. Oh dear. And I can't move out. Oh dear. I might need to retry. Can I do that from here? I had to retry turn on, right? I think so. Oh dear. <laughs> That's pathetic. That's why Sprint would be good, even for... There we go, it's done there. Okay. Uh, am I saying that I'm going to keep retrying this until I don't get mind controlled? No. Am I thinking about it? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Let's go. All right. Once again, I can't hit quite everything I want to. That's fine. I could charge him? Which as silly as this sounds, it might not be a bad idea. Like, I realize this sounds ridiculous. But hear me out. If I hit their charge unit, their shock unit, so if I hit them, they cannot charge. I'm just going to stand in their face. Now, there is still a problem. A flying undead fish looking problem. 
uh, that's not something I can really resolve. Resisted? The double resists. I'm going to thank that on... Ready this? Uh, because of the resist the resilient trade or whatever I took. Okay, you're dead. Okay, get on this guy. Cool. We did it, team. It took one restart, but that's okay. I will accept that. Because I am punching way above my weight right now. Um, can Eratus get any shots on this thing? Cool. Then you can kill it. Alright, I think that's it. Who could have guessed? Things would go well as long as I didn't get mind controlled. That isn't the exact reason why I picked the resistance at the start for my faction, but it is a contributing factor. Like, I wasn't thinking, oh, mind control, exactly. But, you know. Missed. In Age of Wonders 3, there were a lot of mind control effects. Oh, I could have eaten the corpse. Well, that's fine. Uh, I can't reach him, so... Maybe I can if I kill this? Let's see. Nice. Perfect. Done and done. Oh, against the odds, damn straight. You have withstood the trials of the Temple of the Gotir. The halls fall silent. As you venture further, a shimmering passes over a massive statue at the far end of the temple. When the light disappears, the statue has changed to show none other but you, Supreme Necromancer, Lord of the Dead, Eratus. The voice booms once more. You have proven yourself a worthy god, dear, O oh, Supreme Necromancer. Henceforth, this temple will be dedicated to you and your divine word. The voice fades, and with it the original words of the temple, a silence falls, as if the temple waits for a new creed. So we gain 153 Imperium. We can say life through death, which is a shadow boon that will affect all of our stuff, and we gain a whole bunch of souls. For more bone, that is. We could say divinity through majesty to double our Imperium game, or power through greed to get some major uh, evil alignments and a bunch of gold. Ooh. Life through death. Makes the most sense. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the souls. Now, the souls don't actually do anything, just like hoarding them. I guess not. no resource does. But, you know, now we can make a bunch of bone daddies. And I'm going to go deal with this now. Which is all fine and dandy. We have acquired lightning focus. I guess we can get some in Lesser Spirit Elemental. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Storm Elemental. I am interested in this one. Distant Evocation. And Magecraft 2. Both of these. We also have reached level 5, which means we get a signature skill every 5 levels. Now, these skills come with affinity. However, the affinity of their affinity only affects your empire for your leader. So if we had a hero, a secondary hero that reached level five or whatever, they would these skills would still have affinity attached, but it wouldn't affect our overall empire affinity. So our options: the visions of woe for astral affinity, 
enemy units in a one hex radius fumble their attacks for one turn. I am very interested in that. We could get some chaos in our life. Slight chance of instantly killing an injured target. The chance increases the lower the target's HP points are. Not bad. Materium, don't care. Summon animal, not erratus. Holy retribution, bleh. Or dark ritual. Enemies in a one hex radius sustain damage. 10 damage. All corpses in a one hex radius turn into zombie units. Well, well. Zombies? Zombies? Of course, zombies. Of course. We can cast the brand of wrath. Look at the bone daddies. This is going to be thumbnail material. The bone daddies. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? The horrific monstrosities. Uh, we can also cast Lightning Focus, which will give our Warlocks the ability to do lightning damage. That's fine. And I'll cast this, I guess. I wish I could have another way to make skeletons. We are a bonded vassal. We can go ahead and boost our allegiance. Soon. So essentially we'll be able to take, to absorb the city, to take it over. And we will get their leader as well, whomever that is. See you. Baroness. You have a fancy orb. Huh. Okay. Mm okay. One more turn. One mo. One mo. The infamous one mo. Oh, we met a ruler. Somehow it's a mountain dwarf. We meet the Dowie. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. It's gonna crash. Nope. Another ruler in this realm. How many more can this realm take? Let us just agree to stay out of each other's ways. Hmm. How do you greet first guardian Tugram Hammerfall? So, they are true neutral right now. No recent evil actions. Just makes them good. Okay, whatever. Materium, shadow, and nature. So we do have an affinity alignment, which is probably why they kind of like me. Can't see that here. Every AI has a personality that defines whether they're going to like you or not. So this one is a reserved isolationist. So they like empires that do not start wars. They like empires with few alliances, but they dislike empires that have defeated other empires, and they dislike empires with vassals, which I have. Interesting. Currently, we are at peace, and there's no need to threaten them. There's no need to gift them something either. Probably just going to want money. Their threat level is trusting. And they're interested in gold. Shocker. I could have sent a gift, but there's no reason to. We're not here for diplomacy. It is relatively advanced, but we're not here for it. Well. Oh, you killed that for me. I see. Hello. Does that mean that your empire... Oh, you're in the way. Is up there? Oh, there's even more of you. I'm afraid of how far the AI has advanced. Wait a minute. Okay, this is still tier 2s and tier 1s. This is still manageable. How did you get a Plague Servant? And how do I get one? These are the questions. Okay. That's fine. We're ready to cast this. Let's get it on. Now, there are two types of enchantments. Did that override? It shouldn't have overridden it. No. So there are two types of enchantments. There's minor transformations and major transformations. And these are minor transformations. So they can stack on top of each other, which is cool. Although I do wish I could make this show. I lost connection to server. The major transformations you can only have one of, and it's the final tier of, like, your race fully transforms to your image. And you better believe we're going to make everyone undead. Because that's what we do. This walk is awful. It's absolutely atrocious. 
fetch. I might take this and make this my deployment zone. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, it's beautiful. Research mana. The mana I so desperately need. One more. That's all these are going to be. These episodes are just going to be me resisting the urge to one mount. One mount. One mount. Lots of unknown rules. I bet the moment we go upside, we'll see a bunch of them. I bet. All right. Mana. Yes. I was going to take this and make it the thing, wasn't I? I was. The uh, Dark Forge. No. We have more. 10 mana, plus 3 mana per adjacent conduit counts as a conduit. Well... I'm pretty sure I only have one conduit. And I'm pretty sure I can only have one conduit. I could make this Forester. You can turn anything into the Empowerment, so it doesn't have to be a conduit that transforms into this. And the Spelljammer. Enemies cannot target world map spells in this domain. Oh. Lose 10 mana counts as a conduit. Don't need that either. Okay. Maybe in time when we need less foresters to boost stuff. We'll go ahead and do that. The Overlord's Tower. That's fun. So see, we have a reduced city structure. Or city stability. But I'm, I thought we could ignore this. Do I need a building to do this? It is the Overlord's Tower prevents provinces breaking off. Hmm. Not sure. Maybe, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe not. There are buildings to boost. You can only build one guild per city. Oh, I see a stay hall, not a guild. Uh, there are buildings that boost morale. But I don't see any of them. There's a tavern and a bathhouse or something. Maybe we just dark just don't have it. Maybe dark doesn't give a shit. Probably doesn't, to be honest. Hmm. We should probably try and consolidate here. This war might get me into trouble here. Oh, I'm opening up another pathway. Oh, no. And we have unlocked our Tier 2 Tome. I think this is a great place for us to call it. But let's take a look at these first. The Tome of Scrying. Interesting. Summon Watcher. Wow. We are... So pretty much every level, I'm going to pick up... Oh. Wait. Oh, they're both Soul Tomes. Interesting. So they're not a... An ice tome here? Anyway, so we can choose the tome of the Doom Herald. Interesting. You can get a Banshee. The Prelude of Doom. Curse Despair. Cruel Weaponry. So this is like morale bombing, but the AI cheats so hard that I don't know how... I mean, this transformation will help, stealing morale per hit, but I'm still concerned. Whereas this is the Tome of Necromancy. And I feel like I have to take the Tome of Necromancy. So, yeah. There's that. Necromancers are the greatest healers of all. Absolutely. As they have the power to cure the greatest ailment itself. Death. Death. Some will fear such an existence. The fate of all mortals, especially the sanctimonious idiots who presume to use me. I am nobody's puppet. That might be good to get. I am the puppet master. And in death, you will all dance upon my stream. Six turns out from just a bunch of knowledge. This will be good to get eventually, but we haven't conquered anything right now. 
And I think this is a good place to stop. We have a quest. We have another silver landmark we're heading towards, which I probably shouldn't be. Do I build the Necromancer? Probably. The Dark Knight. Our champion. Uh, no. I am researching the Necromancer. I think I construct them. But, Eratus is back, my friends. I hope you're looking forward to this series as much as I am, even though we've been off to a slow start, but I think our crypt is looking to swell. Next time, Eratus ventures into the overworld with his legion of doom. I wish I could cross this. And check out this desecrated temple, because you know what's more fun than a temple? A desecrated temple. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you to the patrons and the channel members who support the channel. I greatly appreciate you. If it's me happy channel, feel free to join the Discord description down below. And I'll see you next time as we venture forth into the overworld to spread death. Bye.